Good afternoon, everyone. Let's do a quick show of hands. How many of you are using the DevOps to accelerate your software development lifecycle? Awesome. Let's do one more question. How many of you are using the OpenStack in your production environments? Wow, this is decent. One last tricky question. How many of you are using the DevOps to upgrade your routers, to upgrade your packet gateways? Anyone? This is the topic for today. So DevOps is totally transformed the, our software development lifecycle. Previously, developers used to write the code, and ops teams, they used to deploy the code. It used to take uh, three to four months to release a major product feature. And it used to take uh, weeks to months to provision a single server. DevOps totally transformed that one. It's a game changer. Now, from crawling the IT development to the running, the DevOps totally transformed it. Now you can spin the environments in minutes. And you can run the thousands of test cases with single click. And you can make the releases in two weeks or in one week. DevOps is totally transformed the IT development lifecycle. But there are two problems the teams are struggling with. The first one, if I want to open a firewall to my backend systems, I set up the new environment. I want to open a firewall to my 10 of my backend systems. Still, it takes days to weeks. It's a still standard manual process. There is no end-to-end -end automation. The second problem, if I want to add a new feature to my routers or packet gateways, we will design and develop and to test in the network production network environments. It is taking almost, can you imagine, five to six months. Can't we accelerate this process? Can't we make it more agile? making the network upgrades and network changes? Can't we apply the DevOps principles? Today we are going to show you how we can apply the DevOps principles for the network upgrades and the network changes. Once we show you this, I'm sure you'll be confident, or at least you'll try, how to apply your standard agile practices for the network upgrades and network changes. My name is Sharath Nalutla. I'm an associate director, DevOps Platform Engineering, Verizon. I'm responsible for DevOps toolchain and its engineering platform. I help the teams to automate their software development lifecycle and foster the innovation. Today, I'll be presenting this one with my great colleagues, my friends, my partners from Ericsson. Uh, I'm Harshad Tanna. I'm chief architect on Cloud Manager product, which was uh, used for this proof of concept with Verizon. My name is Behul Shah. I'm part of the CTO team at Ericsson, uh, uh, assigned to Verizon account. Thanks, uh, Harshad. So let's quickly go over the agenda. So we'll talk about our DevOps journey at Verizon. We don't take much time. And then we'll talk about the NFEs. What are the continuous integration and continuous delivery building blocks of NFEs? And we'll go over the couple of use cases. We worked with Edison, how we can automate the complete life cycle with one click. You can make the changes and upgrade these virtual functions. Let's give a quick introduction, who is Verizon? I know we don't need an introduction about Verizon to Americas, but we have the friends from all over the world. 
Verizon is America's most prominent and most reliable broadband and wireless network. We have over 110 million wireless customers, and we have six plus million internet customers and around six million video customers. We have our 178K plus employees working around the world to support our business and serve our customers. We have around 1,700 plus retail physical locations, the presence, and with a large online presence on the web. Let's quickly go over the, about Ericsson. Okay, so um, Ericsson, we don't make cell phones. Um, a lot of people still think, you know, we make cell phones. Um, we are a large provider for uh, radio networks. Uh, we also provide IT products and solutions more focused on OSS and BSS uh, systems for telecom industry. And we also have media offerings and um, we are a global company, operate in uh, 150 plus customers, uh, uh, countries 180, uh, uh, global presence. Uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, we are a Sweden-based headquarter company. Our US headquarters is in Plano in Texas. Yeah, so uh, Sharad talked about uh, uh, some of the challenges uh, when it comes to the network functions, and this is especially true when we are talking about uh, the, the telco providers because a lot of gear there is made up of network functions. There are IT systems for sure, and uh, Verizon has uh, a large amount of IT systems. They have uh, applied this uh, DevOps processes for such IT systems, but then we are looking at uh, uh, the challenge that uh, Verizon uh, posed to us uh, about the network functions. And a lot of network functions like firewalls, routers, load balancers, packet gateways, and IMS, these are some of them are very complex systems. Uh, they are uh, today provisioned as, uh, are deployed as physical uh, boxes uh, with their own uh, uh, hardware and software, everything packaged in, in racks and shipped to the data centers where they run uh, all the uh, network load that provides the wonderful services for wireless customer and uh, the wireline customers. Uh, the, so the challenges are that when you have the functions or the applications in such physical form, uh, it takes very long release cycles that uh, uh, Sharad talked about. Some, in some cases, even after the equipment arrives at the location, by the time it is uh, stacked and uh, racked and wired and, and uh, uh, configured, for first services to be running on that, it takes five to six months many times. And that poses uh, the, this challenge where any new upgrades or uh, new releases that you want to take for such network functions uh, is going to take a very long time compared to the, what we are seeing in the IT industry now. So the, with the advent of uh, network function virtualization, which you have all heard about, we started looking at uh, this topic. Can we make it even faster? With NFV, it is possible that we can, uh, we can now deploy this function, network functions uh, in the virtual machines or containers uh, in some time in the future, but still it leaves a couple of things uh, uh, th that are not addressed in that environment. You can package the network functions uh, and deploy them. But these network functions are not developed within the IT shops of the network provider. In many cases, these network functions are coming from uh, third-party vendors like Ericsson. And it, it follows a little bit of a different life cycle. Uh, it doesn't get uh, ingested into the normal DevOps life cycle. And we said that let's look at uh, any ways to uh, integrate this network function virtualization with uh, uh, the DevOps lifecycle of the IT applications 
in the providers' uh, IT shops. So that's where uh, Sharath is going to take us uh, through that journey, and we carried out this POC with them, and we, uh, we, we can discuss a little more details there. Uh, thanks, Sasha. So let's quickly talk about uh, the different phases of uh, Verizon's DevOps journey and uh, rebuilding our engineering culture. We started this journey almost four to five years back, but we made a significant progress in the last two to three years. We have over 1,000 plus applications that we run to support our business and serve our customers. Now we started moving from large legacy delivery models to more agile, modern delivery models. Even though we are a big technology company, there were specific challenges that we are facing across the portfolios within the Verizon. Development teams, they write the code. From the time they write the code to push it to the production, it has to go through the several teams. Someone has to build, someone has to package, someone has to deploy, someone has to test. All these teams are working in silos. There is no collaboration. There was no collaboration. That is one of the specific challenges I took it, and we enabled a DevOps tool chain. The second one was, let's say, if you want to provision few servers for the application development, it has to go through different teams and several handoffs. It used to take from weeks to months. Each of these gaps, each of these delays, piled up, and at the end, the major release used to take like three to four months. So then we thought, okay, let's apply, let's automate. A line of code written by the developer might be only the manual thing. All the functions that you build it around the line of code, everything needs to be automated. That is our philosophy. Nothing else, only developer will write the code until it goes to production and set up the environments, everything is one click. Everything needs to be automated. So we set up a DevOps tool chain. Let me quickly give over what is a DevOps tool chain. It consists of several tools, if you can see over there. One is like a project, agile project management tool, and a version control system, and a test case management automation tools and uh, provisioning tools and uh, build and deployment provision tools like Jenkins. What we used here, we used the Jira for the project management and the Agile project uh, models. We used the Git for a version control system. We used the Selenium for the test automation and we used uh, Ansible for the orchestration and we used uh, Jenkins for the build and deployments. So this, the whole process of automation, it took almost two to three years out of 1,500 applications are now following these agile automation models. The developers used to write the builds and make the builds like 20 or 30 in a week, but now almost 800 to 1,000 automated builds are happening. You can see the, the accelerating the innovation and uh, how fast we can deliver the software and new features to the customers. So the story was good, everything is fine, and uh, there was a tremendous progress. As Arshad said, the NFE is born, right? So now NFE, we are all using it, and uh, how we can apply these principles, DevOps principles, to these network functions? Can we make it more agile? So what we did, we took this use case, and we did a proof of concept with uh, Ericsson. We worked on two use cases. The first one, take the Ericsson's virtual router and take it from Ericsson and put it in our OpenStack network and instantiate it. Do the whole process with one click. The second use case that we worked on, let's say today virtual router is version 1.2. Tomorrow there were new features and Ericsson releases the version 1.3. 
how we can upgrade our networks, how we can upgrade uh, our network environment as a test or production seamlessly without any disturbances. Or, so we took the two use cases, we did a proof of concept, and uh, the goals and benefits of these use cases are how to enable the DevOps principles, and the best, the important one is shorten the time to market. Right now it, it's taking four to six months. Now we are making it to almost hours. That's a big leap. Let's talk about how we did this one. So if you see all these network function virtualization, these are all the software packages at the end. So Ericsson has their own life cycle, own development model. So they design, they develop, and they test, and they release at Ericsson. So we take that project, we take that package, OVF package, and we'll pull it into our binary repositories. Here we use the JFrog artifactory so that Ericsson will push the virtual routers automatically into our binary repository. Then use the Jenkins, the same tool that we are using for the application builds and deployments. So use the Jenkins and use the Ansible and orchestrate it using the Ericsson Cloud Manager. Ericsson Cloud Manager is, it is used for instantiating, activating, and uh, deploying these VNFs into the network. So here the specific package, it's called the OVA package. So Asha, do you want to tell more about what is this VNF package model is? Yeah, it's basically the VNF, uh, it's traditionally known as VNF descriptors. Uh, we have used uh, in this particular case, uh, open virtualization format and uh, OVA is a, a whole package that consists of the descriptor plus all the images, uh, the VM images for the virtual router uh, delivered as a, a, a output of that build cycle from uh, Ericsson uh, to a provider like you. And then there are other formats possible like heat orchestration templates or uh, in, in short future, future basically very short time from now, we will be also supporting Tosca-like uh, uh, descriptors. So th that is, in the end, basically it is application packaged uh, in a uh, in a tar tarball-like uh, deliverable yeah. uh, that can be consumed into Artifactory. So if you really see here. The one pipeline is running from a vendor. They are developing, and they are pushing that package like a software. No more appliances here. They are not pushing the appliances to HTTP. So this is a software package. They are pushing it to our pipeline. So the two different pipelines are integrated through a repository, and everything will be deployed and tested in our networks. Let's talk about the first use case. Here, the Ericsson is provided the OVA file. Once their team, once they develop it and test it, even with a small feature release, a small function, they don't need to wait. They'll push it to our artifactory. So once we take it from the artifactory, the everything will be like our standard IT pipeline. Just build a Jenkins pipeline that has four steps. The first one, pull the OVA file from the artifactory, then upload it to the EVR. Here, EVR is Ericsson Virtual Router to ECM, Ericsson Cloud Manager, using the REST APIs. Then you can deploy it in an OpenStack environment. So basically, we are taking the router from the Ericsson and deploying it in OpenStack environment. As a last step, even we are testing it, whether it is working or not. The whole process is with one click. There is a small change from there, and it is coming over here, and we are deploying it on our Mirantis OpenStack environment. So let's quickly, we did a video of this one, the whole process, how we did. 
it's a couple of minutes video. Let's uh, watch that. In this video, we will see in real time how virtual network function changes can be deployed in the NextGen OpenStack environment using the DevOps platform. For this demonstration, we used a virtual network function vRouter provided by Ericsson. Enabling DevOps for the VNF deployment shortens the time to market for network feature updates and increases the quality of streamlining deployments. To enable this functionality, we installed Ericsson Cloud Manager in our OpenStack environment. Ericsson Cloud Manager, or ECM, is a cloud management system that enables the creation, orchestration, activation, and monitoring of services running on programmable network resources. In this use case, we accept the Ericsson Virtual Router OVA file into our internal artifact repository, One Artifactory. Using Jenkins, our orchestration engine, we can pull that file from Artifactory and deploy it in OpenStack using Ansible and ECM APIs. Let's take a look at the Ericsson Cloud Manager UI. At this point in time, you will see there are no virtual applications deployed onto the network yet, because there are no virtual machines provisioned and no virtual networks created. Additionally, there are no vRouter packages available. Viewing the Verizon internal artifact repository, oneartifactory.verizon.com, we can see Ericsson's vRouter OVA files available for download and deployment. Here we can see the virtual network function continuous delivery pipeline we created using Jenkins. The Jenkins pipeline consists of four steps, pull, register, deploy, and test. In the first step, we will pull the vRouter OVA file from Artifactory and place them onto the build server. In the second step, the Jenkins deploy job will verify the integrity of the OVA file using checksum and then upload it to OpenStack. In the third step, Jenkins will deploy the virtual router onto the OpenStack network. Lastly, in the fourth step of the pipeline, we will run the test job, which will send a ping between the two test VMs and ensure the traffic is routed through the Ericsson virtual router. And voila, that's it. With one click, we can pull, configure, and deploy virtual routers into the OpenStack environment and test their functionality. Now, if we go back to Ericsson Cloud Manager, you can see the received EVR packages, EVR1 and EVR2, one active EVR in virtual applications, the virtual router itself as a set of VMs, and finally, the virtual network that we created during the process. Now we can see all of the jobs in our continuous delivery pipeline are green, indicating that they were executed successfully. This highlights the repeatable process of downloading, deploying, configuring, and testing virtual routers. Even though this test is done automatically in our Jenkins pipeline, we can see the virtual router is working properly by testing connectivity between our two test machines. If we connect to one of our test machines with an IP address ending in 149, we can prove connectivity by pinging the other test machine ending in 151. And there we have it. The virtual router is up and running. Let's take a step back and review what we've accomplished. We stored a virtual router from our vendors in our internal artifact repository and deployed that virtual router onto our networks using a DevOps continuous delivery pipeline. As this is an easy and repeatable process, any changes made to that virtual router's functionality can be tested and deployed onto our networks within minutes using the DevOps platform. So also we worked on the second use case. It's a bit more complex. That is upgrading version from 1.2 to let's say 1.3, even without disturbing any of the existing network resources, making one is active and one is passive, upgrade the passive one and then make it as active and so that you, know, you can have a rollover deployments of uh, virtual routers in your networking platform. 
So this is our POC use cases that uh, proof of concept that we work with uh, Ericsson to showcase that how we can apply the DevOps principles. Now Mehul will talk us what's there, what's next for this NFE journey. Well, um, just to summarize, um, the, the transformation, the network transformation from physical to virtual, that's well underway. And um, Verizon's doing in a lot of work, uh, you know, Ericsson's kind of helping, um, and so are many others in the industry, including I see some of the uh, you know, faces in the room who are very actively engaged on SDN and NFE program. So, I think that transformation, that transitions, you know, that's already started. Uh, but to, to keep things simple, what's really happening is the key enablers that you see at the bottom is the, the network and the network components, like the routers and the other uh, you know, mobile network functions that uh, were briefly mentioned earlier, are becoming more programmable, right? So more API enabled. And uh, uh, that makes it easier to bring them into the DevOps tool chain that we discussed. Also helps them uh, you know, bring into whether it's an OpenStack environment or maybe in the future, some kind of a you know, container environment. There have been a lot of you know, talks uh, you know, around that. So the, the view is that you, know, you are moving from mostly physical world today to the NFE uh, virtualized SDN enabled you know, world of tomorrow. In the future, is very programmable network that will truly you know, provide network functions you know, as a service. Um, very modular architecture that you know, we talked about, full support with OpenStack, containerized, and also enable you know, new business models and new services uh, for what is called you know, network slices, you know, for example, from um, you know, taking a slice of the network from, from radio network to the, the, the mobile core network you know, close to the customer, and essentially just having you know, a slice of the network, let's say, you know, just for connected cars or, or you know, your household appliances, right? So that will just kind of make things, you know, more programmable, and, and uh, there have been a lot of estimates by Ericsson and many other in the industry is by 2020 expected, uh, you know, connected devices to be 20 billion. I've heard the range from 20 billion devices to 50 billion devices. We strongly believe that, uh, virtualizing you know, the network elements, as well as you know, orchestrating them, automating them, and bringing them into you know, some of the DevOps that uh, you know, Sharad talked about in, in this POC is going to be quite critical uh, you know, for the future of the network. So that was the end, Sharad. Anything else? Yeah, that's it. Thank you for Attending and uh, thank you for the partnership. Uh, yeah, and in, any questions? If uh, we are, we can answer. We have, I think, still about ten minutes. So. Questions, comments. Uh, well, so the, this DevOps is uh, how can I say uh, utilizing the uh, new build into the uh, Verizon's lab, and maybe Verizon can easily test it. Do you think uh, uh, you can? extend this model into the uh, actual live production network? Absolutely. This is not just, even though this is a proof of concept, and if it's, it's something like a DevOps journey, right? When someone started automating the, uh, the processes, everyone was thinking, okay, you need to get the confidence. Once you get the confidence, now everything is automated. I'm sure in the coming years, the whole process will be automated. This is not just for the labs. So then, the, if that is the case, what would be the uh, biggest challenge, do you think? You want to take it? Yeah, so, so as uh, you know, Sharad showed, uh, this DevOps tool chain, it's already working in 500 plus IT applications, kind of that mentioned, and, and uh, we've done a proof of concept. The challenge, number one, is you know, prioritizing and you know, doing it. And obviously, uh, you know, vendors like us, uh, you know, as Ericsson, Making sure that you know we provide you know clean VNF descriptor interfaces, in uh, whether it's an OVF or hot templates, you know, and make it as easier as possible for you know Verizon and the likes to you know, integrate with the DevOps. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, so just a question on the naming you you are using like DevOps. Uh, what I see is you have done an automation of. Uh, 
a long manual process by using software like Jenkins and uh, Cloud Manager. So you could achieve one touch end-to-end -end provisioning. But when we say DevOps, it's uh, actually something else, right? I mean, it's a development process where a small group of people with different skill sets come together, build something quickly and test, and if it works, use it. If not, throw it away. So it's, it's more like a, a, a development process rather than an implementation like this. So I, I just wanted to know why you use the term DevOps for this. So uh, see, DevOps has 100 definitions, the way we view it. At the end, are you doing it manually? Are you doing it taking the time for like two, three months? Or you are just automating and do it in minutes? How fast our customers are getting the results? It doesn't matter what process you call and what technology you use. At the end, you need to satisfy the customers and release the features on time, in real time. Are we going to achieve this one with this process and with the automation? That's what we need. Yeah, and there, there, is, there is a development component okay. here. So there are two parts we talked about. There, is a, there are IT applications, and then there are these virtual network function applications. They are applications. One the, for VNFs, the development takes place outside the internal development shop, but there is a development cycle, and that's what we showed as the top line uh, of the VNF's own development life cycle. And the critical idea is that, okay, both of them, how do you combine them so that you can build a common platform for IT as well as network function workloads? And that is the holy grail of uh, this virtualization uh, for a lot of providers here. Uh, hi, uh, thanks, great presentation. Uh, what I wanted to know is that like, you actually showed us an admin workflow for DevOps, when you actually onboarded a full router or upgraded a whole router. Uh, typically, when you actually deploy an application, let's say it's your internal application, you need a subset of that functionality, let's say a couple of router ports to be open, a couple of switch ports to be open, firewall or a load balance of web to be created. You know, have you actually had any experience in taking an application, internal application, not uh, and going through that whole process uh, in a more of a CI CD manner, you know, and not onboarding a, a complete VNF. A complete VNF uh, is a rare event uh, in the DevOps environment. Thank you. So, so the, that is the first challenge I was talking about, right? So, as an application manager, I got the new environment with the 10 servers. It's good, great. But I need to talk to 10 backend systems. Then I need to talk to my network teams or someone, okay, request the process. The whole process is currently is a manual, right? We can solve the same problem in the same similar fashion using the continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines so that once we set up the environment or the infrastructure, kick off another Ansible playbook and open the firewalls so that your systems will talk to the several backends. So this is not limited to the particular, only the virtual you know, functions bringing into the network, not only the upgrades, but also for the changes. Here we showed a couple of use cases, but this can be extended to anything. All right, so very impressive speech, and uh, uh, I'm wondering the interface with orchestrator here is like a cloud manager. And so is that only about the VF onboarding? Uh, secondly, what, what about the VF manager installation? Uh, are you doing um, both of them simultaneously? This is like two questions. Maybe. So the interface is, uh, you, uh, so the cloud manager is acting both as a, a gen generic VNF manager as okay. well as NFVO. So, the onboarding part is, of course, handled through Cloud Manager, but even the, the deployment was handled through Cloud Manager because it exposes the uh, VNF Manager interfaces. And bo both of them are uh, REST APIs. So uh, yeah. I, th those APIs were used in the Ansible uh, scripts, uh, and they were invoked to achieve this end-to-end uh, -end solution. So, yeah, so the follow-up, I mean, the we have the design 
GUI for the VNF like source chain, I mean service design GUIs, right? Uh, I mean that's a, that's a, on top of the orchestrator to design the network service end to end GUI design. So how how you combine with that GUI application? Uh, I'm not sure if I understood the question, but let me repeat it so that okay. Uh, okay so is the question that there is a, a external s uh, service designer uh, to design this end-to-end -end service. In this case, we didn't exercise that, but what you can think of is that that service design is embedded in the, the Jenkins and Ansible uh, scripts, basically. Because th this, again, this was a, a proof of concepts. Of course, when yeah. this goes into actual uh, mano uh, network service deployment, that service, you will have a network service descriptor and the VNF descriptors onboarded onto the cloud manager. Right now, we only use the VNF descriptors. We didn't use any network service descriptors. Okay, so I can discuss with you offline. I mean, yeah. It's very GUI design. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you'd mentioned that you are onboarding a bunch of applications, uh, specifically their builds. What was that process like, and what challenges did you encounter uh, in actually onboarding the applications, getting scripts written, getting test cases implemented? I think uh, I'd be interested in hearing more about that. Uh, yeah, it's a very good question, and uh, this is the journey that we go through every day. So onboarding uh, application to the DevOps platform is really challenging. So it happens, you need to change the culture. You need to have rebuild the engineering culture. So some of the teams might be using the manual process. If you want to test 100 test cases, still if you're using the Excel, and someone using an open source platform like Testlink, and you automate everything and run the hundreds of test cases, if something fails, open a Jira ticket, and so that the developers can fix it. The whole life cycle, once you automate, and once you showcase this one, one particular application, and take it and showcase it to your teams, Obviously, onboarding the rest of the applications is not a big problem. Basically, you need to provide the confidence in the teams when you are making a change, cultural change, and taking them to the next level. Did you onboard them and they uh, Tricky question. Uh, both. Okay. Sometimes we take few applications. See, in any environment, in any company, there are few teams. They want to more, go more agile. So they are your advocates. You make and uh, you know, automate them, others will follow. It's not like everyone wants to be in a rock age, never, right? Hey, uh, it's a great presentation and it truly a DevOps automation in my point of view. Thank you. Uh, are you planning to use OpenStack Tacker like uh, for NFVO and VNF Manager or Ericsson Cloud Manager like, you know, uh, does the same, so, and if so, what is the difference that you are seeing between Ericsson Cloud Manager and uh, the OpenStack Tacker? That's a good question. <laughs> we can talk about uh, Ericsson Cloud Manager, but uh, OpenStack Tacker, I don't know, I need to, you know, we need to get more details. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, thanks for the presentation. My question is, when you onboard an application, when you, especially when you install the new version of vRouter, if the upgrade fails, or if the configuration that you want to make on that fails, how did you handle that condition in this automated lifecycle? I think you're talking about our third use case. <laughs> so we did the four use cases, exactly. We, you know, we drafted the four use cases, a couple of them we talked about today. The second use case was if a router fails, and how we can you know, pull it back and make sure that you know, the network will be in, in, a, in a same state. The other one is when you off, you can scale this environment, when more VMs are added, and how we can bring the more routers and you know, scale it. So there are the other use cases, probably we can go in more details, but uh, we did uh, those uh, third and fourth uh, Yeah, but so we, we didn't execute through that use case. There, especially the, there is an error condition and how you roll back uh, to the previous version. But the principles are kind of same, and this is, I think, applies in your IT applications as well, that whenever a new version of an application that you're trying to roll in fails, you always, always have a, the, the previous version that is handling some of the uh, traffic or some of the application functions, and you roll back to that and clean up the resources behind it. So the, we, have, we discussed the scripts 
uh, and the, the flows for that, but we didn't execute. This was just a proof of concept. And we want to basically share with the community what, what we have achieved so far. So, so if you had a simple uh, you know, logical extension, that might be another step in the Jenkins pipeline. Something goes wrong, you can just fix it again. Maybe one more question, and I think we can take. Uh, so, what you explained here is the, the proof concept that you already achieved. So, my question is more for the next step. Based on this proof concept result, for the future, what's the plan for Verizon perspective, and what's your strategy? That's a very good question. This is a proof of concept. When this is for, happens for the any life cycle. When something comes, we'll do with a proof of concept. We'll build the confidence. And when the time comes, we'll realize the same things in production environments. Yeah, this is natural, quite natural for any of the other automation or any of the, the changes that we do. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.